Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Paul Farkerson from Formation Metals. How are you today? Fine, Tracy. Thank you very much. Paul, I rarely have a situation where all my editors and analysts all kind of crowd around me and say, you have to, you have to follow this story. We have to write more about Formation Metals. And you're certainly an example of this. And last month, for instance, your stock was up 80% proving that, again, my analysts and editors know what they're talking about. Can you tell me why your stock did as well as it did? Well, I, I think, Tracy, uh, you know, there's a lot of different factors there, but uh, we have been kind of uh, trying to get the word out lately about the company. Uh, we've just finished a lot of metallurgical test work. That work is done now, so we can prove that we can make a product uh, from our actual ore itself. And the Prospectors and Developers Association, it happened just a little while ago. So we were really out talking about the company and making things happen. Well, of course, you had a corporate update. This corporate update, I've seen a lot of companies put out corporate updates that do not get as good of a response as yours did. You did earlier in March, and of course, the metallurgic studies that you were talking about. Uh, I was reading that uh, it included a final high purity cobalt salts result. Okay, I don't know what that means. Help me understand what that means. Well, the, the metallurgical work is feasibility level metallurgical work, and that's where we're heading towards a feasibility study. And what we did, we actually took our own ore from our project in, in Salmon, Idaho, and we delivered it to uh, Hazen um, um, Engineering in Denver, and Hazen made a concentrate from our ore. Then once we have a concentrate, it goes to uh, SciTech, and SciTech are the ones that provide us with the reagents. So they hit it with the reagents and they make a pregnant leach solution, which once again is our ore. That solution then gets shipped to General Electric because they have the crystallizers, and we made an ultra pure cobalt chemical, cobalt sulfate heptahydrate, which is used in the battery industry. So it, it was proof that on a bench test level, we could go from our ore to a final ultra pure product and that's very huge for us in the company. Well I think that's very exciting for, for many of us too in the market because we have a, an ethically sourced North American, envir environmentally friendly I think I read too. Now not everybody in our audience may be familiar with Formation Metals. They've been very quiet, you've been very focused on developing the business over the last couple of years that I've been following you. Can you tell us just a bit of an overview? Who is Formation Metals and why this is such an interesting story for investors? Uh, Tracy, this is, a, this is a fantastic story. I mean, we've been developing this project for a few years now, quite a few years now. And it, is, uh, it was designed and, and to be built from reclamation back to mine construction. So this is as environmentally friendly as we can make this project. It is the only primary co cobalt deposit in the Western Hemisphere. So that's unique in itself. There's only one other primary cobalt deposit in the world. And this project is 100% permitted. So we have gone through all the steps and the expense to put this project at a stage now where we can put it into production. And we've spent roughly $100 million on the project to get it where it is now. So this is an extremely advanced project. So Formation Metals is an extremely advanced project and you're with your race towards production. What is the timeline towards production? The, uh, the latest document that we have published out there, the PEA 43101 compliant PEA, says we have about 13, minute, 13 months of construction and the, the critical path to construction is going underground and once you go underground you have to keep going. So 13 months of construction and about three to eight months of ramp up. So from, from financing to full, to start of construction to actual full production is 21 months. And, and that, Tracy, is because we've, uh, we've spent $100 million on the project. 95% of the engineering and earthworks are completed already at the mine site. So the big thing we have to do now is the cobalt production facility, which is the new flow sheets that we have just uh, developed uh, based on our new metallurgical work and to put that into the cobalt production facility. So that's the bulk of the work that needs to be done now. Okay, John, I hope you're hearing this. John Peterson, of course, on Investor Intel has been writing a series of columns about the supply and demand challenges in lithium ion batteries with cobalt in particular. As a world-renowned expert in cobalt, can you talk to us about this? Is he correct? Is this true that we have a shortage? 
Oh, he's, he's absolutely correct. Uh, some of the articles that John have written are just tremendous. It's, it's bringing a lot of light to the actual business as we, as we carry on. Uh, the, the people extremely in the know, like the Glencores, the Sherrits, like these people are all predicting a deficit of cobalt probably this year, 2016, with the amount of uh, copper cobalt that's coming offline and in Africa, the amount of nickel cobalt that's coming offline, uh, Glencores and, and the Valets, there is not going to be enough um, supply there to meet the demand. And the demand now is greater than 50% for the batteries and electric vehicles. So John has done a, a really good job of bringing that to the surface. So I'm looking at my watch now, 16 months from today, is that correct? Will you be producing? It, it's uh, 13 months of construction and eight months of full ramp up. So 21 months we could be in full production. Okay, so 21 months, and then for those shareholders out there that are in the game right now and are very, very happy with you presently, can you tell us what we should anticipate, say, in the next uh, quarter or two? Well, I think over the next short term, uh, Tracy, we are, um, we've sent out uh, RFPs, requests for proposals to, to complete a definitive feasibility study. We've got tremendous interest from uh, very high caliber engineering firms to bid on this. So we're going to start our feasibility study over the next few months here. All the information should be in to us by April 15th. I think that's going to be a good catalyst because we'll be able to give progress reports as we move along with the feasibility study. In the meantime, we will be talking because we have have new specs. We have a spec sheet for the product. We will be talking to the, the players in the game, uh, you know, specifically the offtake people or the battery manufacturers or the end users, um, you know, the, the automobile bakers of, of the actual batteries themselves. And we have the ability to make that product. So the doors are kind of being opened on us now. And as those um, negotiations advance, we'll let our shareholders know how we're making out. It's, it's very exciting times for us. Well, I'll tell you, Paul, thank you so much for updating us on your race tour to production. Thank you, Tracy. Pleasure to be here.